Hiya. Um, I've just killed a fly. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some macro shots of it. Uh, I mean, I, I know a lot of people say that, you know, you shouldn't kill any insects for photography. Uh, I've got to say that wasn't my intention. My intention was to actually kill the fly because they are just a nightmare in my house. It's mostly because of the heat. So the photography came after I had killed the fly. Uh, I killed the fly using my executioner, which is an, well, it's an electric zapper. So I'm just hoping that when I hit the fly, it didn't make, uh, it doesn't look like it made contact with the wires themselves. You know, the eyes didn't make contact with the wires. Because if they do, they tend to then get messed up really, uh, really proper. You can't actually uh, take any nice pictures of them afterwards. I'll show you a picture of uh, that because that happened another time when I used this ex executioner. But this time around, I think I did miss the eyes. So we're going to find out. Okay, I've got my fly all set up. I think what I'll do is I'll bring the camera over and you can have a look at the setup that I'm going to be using. Uh, I think I just need to turn on my light as well. Boom, to get it all lit up. Okay, I've got my Canon 70D hooked up to my 100mm macro lens with my extension tubes. And I've got my light source here because I didn't want to use flush. Hopefully it's not going to be too harsh, the lighting. And there's my fly that's impaled on that sort of needle there. And now that doesn't look nice, but well, the fly was dead. Anyway. Uh, yeah, that's my setup. Let's see if I can capture some nice uh, images. I think what I need to do first of all is turn it to Maimo. And I need to f try and focus on that fly. Which I'm struggling at the moment. I can't find it. There we go. There's the fly. So I'm gonna bring it all the way to the yeah, because I'm not focusing distance, isn't it? Let's see if I'm I think I'm gonna take the hood off. Because that's blocking the light as well. And Move him closer, 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 closer. Oh, God, this way. Here we go. I don't think I've got enough light to be honest. That might be a bit of a problem. Let's see. See, that's not the right kind of flush. I would need my macro ring, but I can't be bothered to set that up now. So what I'm going to do is maybe just add a little bit of a... Just a little bit of additional light. Then that's in focus. That's a little... Yeah. Okay guys, um, I've got my images all uploaded to the computer and I've got them open up in uh, the Lightroom. That's where I'm going to do my few edits. The purpose of this video was to do some uh, photo stacking in Photoshop. However, the problem that I ran into was the fly wasn't actually dead and it was actually moving some of its uh, mouth parts. And the problem with that is when you're doing, uh, trying to do some uh, photo staking is any movement is going to be shown in your final image. So in other words, you know, this mouth part uh, that I've got here, what's going to happen is in, uh, in the, because they're the ones that we're actually moving. So in the final uh, photo, you're going to have maybe a few, you know, one, two, three sort of mouth parts showing, which is then just going to ruin the footage. To be honest, I think I'm going to actually use just one photo 
for my social sort of uh, media side but for the purpose of this video I'm still gonna do some uh, photo stacking so what I'm gonna start off by doing is uh, editing one of the photos which is I'm gonna start off with this one I'm not gonna use all of them because if I use all of these photos uh, you know what was to uh, what I was talking about you know where you've got all those mouth parts all the other parts which were moving showing in your final image that's going to be amplified I don't want that so I'm just going to use four because uh, on those four I think they're the ones which there was the least type of movement movement in them even though there were still some movement uh, showing in terms of um, editing I'm not going to do much really because I don't quite like the way this photo looks so I'm just going to do a white balance which I'm gonna put on to auto. I'm gonna turn uh, take down the highlights a little bit and I might just increase the texture and the clarity just a little bit not much really and uh, maybe the haze as well and then I'm gonna go down to sharpening I might sharpen this image a little bit yeah like that and then in terms of lens correction I'm just gonna do remove chromatic aberrations that's it the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight oh yeah they're already highlighted these four images and then I'm gonna say sync what that's going to do is that's going to sync uh, those uh, adjustments I've done to that first photo to all of the images that I've got and once I've done that I'm then going to say edit my photos in uh, Photoshop but I'm going to open them as layers in Photoshop because what that will do is they will all be stacked one on top of each other making it easy for your photo stacking once that's done, the next thing I'm going to do now is I'll press shift whilst you know the first photo is uh, selected and then press shift uh, on my keyboard and then press the last one that then selects all of the photos and then you go to edit, press auto align, press ok, that's going to align all the photos and then once that's finished you go again to edit and then you go to auto blend you've got two options here the first one is panorama so if you're doing a sort of a stitching together lots of pixels of all panorama in landscape usually photography that's the tab that you press here but i'm doing stacking so you press the bottom one here which is uh, stack images and you say okay and then I'm going to show you what I actually meant by the mouth parts being duplicated because they were moving uh, in all of the images. Because at the moment you can see there's only one mouth part, isn't there? Boom, can you see that? Now you've got that bit here and you've got the bottom one as well, it's all duplicated. But in terms of uh, clarity for the whole image is actually much much sharper because it's now a stacked image if I had used all of those uh, photos uh, to do the stacking the eyes here because they weren't moving would have been much much clearer much much sharper but you would have had lots of uh, mouth parts here and maybe the legs as well they would have been duplicated because of movement so because of that even though the eyes are much much sharper I'm not going to use this image at all because I think it's just been ruined really by the movement so instead yeah, I'm going to clear that and then I'm just going to open up one of the images which is this one here it's uh, already been edited I'm happy with that what you can do is, um, whilst you're still in your on the raw camera app, you can do because you, I mean, as you can see in this photo here, you've got loads and loads of uh, what you call them spots. You can remove them by pressing this uh, tab here, 
and then you can just go around and maybe enlarge it tick him you can visual visualize them even better by pressing here and then can you see them i mean my lens really needs a good clean doesn't it but for now well you know we've got covid going on maybe my lens clean is the last thing on my mind to be honest actually i think i'll do it myself really but yeah that's what you that's what you need to do to remove the spots on your on your images i'm not gonna do all of them and once you're satisfied just press open and it opens up in photoshop i think the fly is a little bit crooked isn't it uh what i'm gonna do next is try and straighten it <laughs> straighten it by pressing that tab here i'm just gonna press maybe from here to there boom that does it and then i'm gonna that take it down that's it that's gonna be my micro shot of the fly it's quite noisy the footage as you can see I mean look at that it's quite noisy what I tend to do to remove noise in my images I use uh, top, topaz denoise so I just click on the plugin it'll take me to top of the noise boom that's done i mean you've got all this fine tuning that you can do if you want uh, i mean if the noise uh, reduction is not up to your standards but for me i think the image is actually quite uh looking quite fine actually you know all the noise is gone so i'll just press apply the other thing is i think because i have cropped the hell out of this image it's actually now quite small what I then tend to do in a uh, in a situation like that is I will resize it. Um, I'll go here. I'll change uh, the values here to percentage, and then I think I'm just going to do it uh, to two hundred percent. But depending on how big you want it, use whatever percentage you want to. But just bear in mind that the more you increase it there is an element of degradation of uh, image quality as well but yeah look at that i'm happy with that okay yeah i think that's it really guys for this video i know it was meant to be sort of um, a stacking tutorial but that didn't work out well so here we are if you like uh, this video, please give me a like and I wouldn't mind if you guys would subscribe as well. Until the next video, take care.